Hello, my friends, and uh, welcome back. Thank you very much for being with me again today. We don't have to be a uh, top negotiator or, you know, have a uh, 150 IQ or anything like that to uh, realize that this deal that this idiot uh, broke with uh, Iran is bankrupt. And I will read it for you. It comes from Antony Blinken, uh, Mr. Zelensky Stein, and he's going to tell us what deal he made with Iran. Now, I'm not disagreeing with the deal. I think Iran did an A-OK, -okay, fantastic deal. I'm just uh, looking at uh, Blinken, who uh, I think lost. And if Blinken lost, we lost, unless they won somewhere that we don't know. So let me show you this little article. Coming from Associated Press, U.S. moves to advance prisoner swap deal with Iran and release $6 billion in frozen Iranian funds. I have no problem with uh, these guys releasing that, so don't get me wrong. But I would like to know what are these guys going to get? Because it says here that uh, there's going to be a prisoner swap and then release $6 billion. What else? All right, we're going to find out. That's why we're here. But my friends... Uh, <laughs> Get ready. The Biden administration has cleared the way for the re uh, release of five American citizens detained in Iran. Yeah. By issuing a blanket waiver for international banks to transfer six billion, six billion on this side, in frozen Iranian money from South Korea to Qatar without fear of US sanctions. In addition, as part of the deal, the administration has agreed to relieve, re release five Iranian citizens held in the United States. So, wait a minute. I want to say, hey, I'm going to make this little deal with you. I'm going to give you five people. You're going to give me five people, but you give me six billion dollars. Who won? Please tell me that I'm wrong. Now again, I have nothing with the Iranians. Good for them. So they um, froze those money, that, that those funds. The Iranians will get six billion and they swap five versus five. Boop, 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 boop. Now you tell me, now you tell me, would you make this kind of deal? Now, Put this together with what I said many, many, well, let's make this one clear, like Obama, let, make it, let me be clear about this, uh, shut the f up, anyway, I will me, me, let me be clear about this, we don't know if that's all, I read the article, that's basically 5 versus, versus 5 and five, uh, 6 billion, we don't know what else is over there, but nevertheless, didn't I say that the Americans, the American administration, uh, in the past 32 years, forgot how to negotiate, how to make deals, how to use brains. Why? Because I argued they didn't have to. It's like a lion on a savanna. You have a jackal and you have a lion and you have a killed buffalo. Do you think that the lion will negotiate with a jackal for that buffalo? Killed? Of course not. Why? Because the lion is stronger. He doesn't have to. That's why lions are not very smart, but jackals are sneaky. Why? Because they have to kind of use a little bit of... Uh, or the, take the, the fox, which I, it's an animal that I dearly like. I would like to have a pet fox. Not a woman, uh, a pet fox. So here we have this guy making this kind of deal, right? Because they forgot. They forgot how to negotiate. Remember I said the diplomacy toolbox of the United States of America has four tools. tools. One is threats. Second one is blackmail. Third one is regime change. And the fourth one is intervention, military intervention. Now with all this, you don't need to use your brain much. So I think this is just an extension of that. And because I said that, I will show you another article uh, coming from the Russians and we'll have the, I think, the UN ambassador or the ambassador to the United States of America, we'll find out in a minute, who says the same thing. 
the Americans doesn't fucking know how to negotiate. All right, let me show you this little article. Let's go back to this weasel first. Zelensky, Zelensky's time. And we have this one. Russia Today. U.S. incapable of negotiating. Russian diplomat. Strategic dialogue with Washington has done nothing for Moscow's national security, claims Alexander Kramarenko. I, it's not... Uh, I thought he was the ambassador, but I thought Neredna, Neredna is not him. Anyway, no amount of negotiating with the U.S. has been able to bring about any meaningful results as Washington has repeatedly broken the trust of its partners and refused to respect agreements, acting solely in its own interest, claims Russian diplomat Alexander Kramarenko. Well, it's not, uh, basically, you can't expect uh, anything else from a country than uh, follow its own interest. But sometimes you have to negotiate, otherwise you're going to get to war, you're going to lose more than you're going to win. So, in an article for the International Affairs newspaper published last week, Kramarenko pointed out that despite decades of trying to maintain strategic dialogue with the US, Russia has ultimately been unable to achieve any results in ensuring its national security and neither, for that matter, has China. The director of the Russian Foreign Ministry Institute of Current International Problems stated that, so that's the Kramarenko, stated that the trust between Moscow and Washington has been undermined long ago. Well, it says here, first we have the, uh, what kind of trust can we talk about here? Where is the principle of pacta sunt servanda, which means contracts must be respected. And uh, what then is the meaning of contracts when everything happens regardless and in spite of any contracts? Apparently, it turns out that Washington is simply unable to negotiate." End quote. Well, again, uh, of course he doesn't have to. And who would? Because we are all inclined, uh, we all have inclinations of uh, tyranny, unless we are so beaten up and disarmed morally that we are afraid to do it. And whenever someone mention somebody or a group or a situation or any historical event is like kryptonite and is supposed to paralyze us more disarm us morally like someone would say for to a german let's say hey I, I i i don't like what you're saying remember what happened in the second world war and the german is supposed to bow his head and uh, accept the um, whatever injustice will be done onto the german and the same thing with some groups in the united states nowadays hey 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 you owe this you owe that because some people did something, some, what? Uh, forget about this kind of guilt, my friend. So anyway, put that to the side. Uh, five versus five plus six billion. I would like to be on the Iranian side right away. So they were not going to be able to get the Iranians on their side. That's for sure. But I'm pretty sure that something behind that we're going to find out soon what exactly that meant. I mean, I, I personally cannot believe that, for instance, Blinken and his team are so dumb. I know they're not that dumb. I know uh, whomever decided this is not that dumb. Something else, somewhere else. I mean, we have Victoria Nuland, uh, Zelensky Stein as well. She's not dumb at all. She's bad or evil. I think so. But it's okay. Uh, that's the way she is. That's the way we are. We're good. She's bad. You know, that's the way they, they look at the world. We good, they bad. So the same, we should do the same way. No, no, we're good, you're bad. How do you like that one? Ugh. All right. So anyway, my friends, maybe we could have negotiated a better deal with the Iranians. I think I wouldn't have been able. But hey, it's a scenario. We, <laughs> at this point, we uh, deal with uh, five, five, six. Thank you very much for being with me again today. Stay strong, stay smart, look for the truth, and be just.